There are countless ancient ruins found throughout Sri Lanka, which are all indicative of a lost technology, and thus a lost civilization having once been responsible for their creation. One of the most striking of these being the Sigiriya Mountain, an ancient stronghold made atop natural plateau, a sanctuary far away from the troubles that would have presumably been occurring below. Yet one of the most astonishing relics found within this ancient land is a rather well-hidden one. Although the water reservoir built into the Sagiria site could offer one a subtle initial clue as to their existence, one would have to investigate the surrounding environment very carefully or be given local knowledge to ever find our next ancient anomaly in question. Hidden close by to the ancient mountainous stronghold, and now almost completely submerged into the surrounding landscape, gargantuan ancient water reservoirs, first documented by a Mr. Tennant from the UK and noted upon by William R. Corliss within one of his many volumes regarding lost civilization. Describing enormous water tanks found with the aid of the locals, all completely aligned with equally cut square blocks. One of the tanks, which the locals knew by the name Petheria corn, has since been measured to be around 7 miles in length, 300 feet broad, with 60-foot-high earthworks along its biggest embankments. They are largely believed to have been constructed to gain complete control and subsequent mastery of irrigation throughout an impressive span of land. We approached an expert engineer to find out just what sort of feet these giant tanks would be. We received back an estimated price of around $4 million to merely construct the largest sections of the earthworks. They were undoubtedly an unimaginably large undertaking, one which we believe was beyond the capabilities of any ancient group known to modern history. Perhaps the sheer enormity of the undertaking along with the fact that they would have been far easier to conceal than that of the Great Pyramids, for example, is a possible motive as to why there isn't more known about these marvelous groundworks, or why there is very little documented study, and why any that has been done was by independent historians. Regardless, we find these incredible, gigantic, hidden ruins highly compelling. We have, in the past, explored the incredible discovery of the mythological animal sculptures of Persepolis, now known as the Lamassu. We detailed the difficulty involved in transporting just a single example of one to London a mere century ago. Yet, it would seem a similar situation seemingly also occurred at the ancient site of Amethyst, one in which the French quietly endured and restrictively documented. Located east of Agio Tychonus, next to Limassol in southern Cyprus, strategically commanding a stunning view of the surrounding Mediterranean landscape. The main acropolis of Amethyst, sitting just out of reach of the tourist track, atop the hill above. This location served also as an additional natural fortification for the site and its ancient observatory. Impressive discoveries have been made at the ruin, including ancient basins, vases, and various other utensils used by past inhabitants of varying eras. Atop the hill were two giant vases decorating the entrance to the main temple, one once dedicated to the god of love Aphrodite, each of which being 1.85 meters tall and weighing an immense 14 tons each one of which being stolen by the French, specifically architect Edmond de Thoit, during the Ottoman occupation of Cyprus, supposedly given permission to take it away to his country. It now rests in the Louvre Museum in Paris. His documentation of this ordeal, we feel, is a revealing insight into the clear prohibition from exposing the astonishing capabilities of ancient civilizational capability. He reservedly wrote of the ordeal of getting it back to Paris in his diary. Quote, Our last day was dedicated to Amethyst, the only sanctuary of Aphrodite that we visited. There, we found two huge stone vases, 3.4 meters in diameter. I could not figure out the amount that was buried in the ground, 
and only a measure of the artifact which was sticking out. I thought if I manage to get it out of there and to convey it into the sea, it will be my biggest achievement. I will begin to study the ways and mechanisms needed to achieve this and to have it transferred. This will create a big impression in the Louvre." End quote. Who made these vases, or indeed the Acropolis itself? They were clearly astonishing vases, having existed to this day and beyond, and along with their sheer weight, we undoubtedly find them highly compelling. Alente Tambo, within Peru, is undoubtedly one of the most incredible ruins to be found anywhere on Earth. Although many people have been mystified by the site's characteristics, some even suggesting that its shelf-like construction was once created as steps for giants, its real original use, however, being no less remarkable. The so-called pre-Incas, responsible for its original build, did so with the intention of utilizing these layers of soil to slowly acclimatize plants that were once not used to a certain altitude through a process of selective breeding, eventually taking them far higher than they were ever found before making it possible to cultivate said herbs, fruits, or vegetables within their high-altitude sanctuaries, once virtually impenetrable fortresses, so that with these newly adjusted phenotypes of plants, and with the aid of what is the subject of this video, could stay high in the mountains virtually indefinitely, self-sustained thanks to the incredible achievements of Olen Tetabo. The Inkamasana Water Temple being the final piece of this now lost people's armory, for although the horticultural knowledge displayed by this lost civilization is evidence of advanced culture, their abilities to control the path of water is another of the pieces of evidence which not only proves that this people were highly capable, but were also unquestionably advanced in their execution of said feats. For although these irrigation systems or drinking water inflows are many thousands of years old, most still work to this day. Some of these water features were so well made that even modern re-inhabitors still use several of these systems, as they even rival that of the modern system which would replace it, bringing water to the locations. Dr. Richard Mixod, who studied the water sources of Inkamasana in Oletantabo, led a team of researchers from the University of Virginia known as the Wright Water Engineers from the Wright Paleo-Hydrological Institute and archaeologists Arminda Gabaja Oviedo and Dr. Gordon McCowan, all of whom conducted reverse engineering in an attempt to back-engineer the remarkable achievements seen at the Water Temple. Located north of the Manuraki Canal, in the sacred valley of the Incas, at an altitude of 3,000 meters, this sophisticated water complex consists of rooms, open spaces, beautiful complex pools, ornamental fountains, waterfalls, and buried channels. These pre-Incan accomplishments display an intimate knowledge of so-called modern hydraulic principles, even building their channels in such a way as to avoid hydraulic jumps. The Water Temple's architecture and hydraulic works define Inkamasana as a high-status sanctuary for worship of water. Intricate and carefully executed cliff carvings parallel to the water temple add a mystical dimension to the temple's original purpose, which is currently claimed to have been the worship of water. Ancient roads also left by this same elusive group unquestionably tie Olente Tabo and the water temple to this once great, now lost civilization's empire. Who built the Inkamasana water temple? How did they build it? Why is the polygonal masonry? something which ancient Peru is synonymous with, found at many of the world's ancient relics. Who were these ancient people? Where did they go? It is undoubtedly an incredible place, one which we find highly compelling. Roman engineers have been attributed and indeed claimed many ruins as their own in which they were simply incapable of creating. Yet they seemingly hijacked a number of sites which we have continued to claim were not their works. The Patera pipes being one such example. Yet alas, although we claimed that the ruin was pre-Roman, our next subject of interest we feel unarguably supports said posit as not only was the creation claimed as having been conceived by the Romans, but these sites 
often the only surviving example, thus is also often argued as the first creation in regards to said concept. Yet although these are often claimed as first attempts, many of the ruins were of such perfected accuracy that not only are they still functional today, but could still serve modern man's purpose. The Patera Aqueduct system, which in fact includes several examples of this ingenious solution to hilly areas in regards to water transportation, places in which the topography of the land makes bridge building an impossible task, forcing the engineers to think of a solution. With the site in question being such an innovation, now known as an inverted siphon, the one we are focusing on tonight is Delic Kemmer, near Patera, undoubtedly connected to the incredible ancient relic that is the Patera pipes. An inverted siphon being a pressurized water conduit. One end sits at a higher elevation than the other, with the center of the structure being the lowest point. The Delikemmer siphon, which was apparently renovated following an earthquake in the 1st century CE, is built out of stone blocks laid across the top of an impressive several hundred foot long wall. Piping holes were then artistically carved out of blocks of stone, which were fitted into each other and ten apparently sealed to create a watertight channel. Thus, due to the system being closed off and pressurized, when water flowed into the higher end, it was forced through the system and subsequently across the valley. The inverted siphon allowed the aqueduct to cross lower elevations, forcing the flow against gravity at certain points. Yet the most compelling detail of the site, and the one we perceive as a smoking gun supporting our prior posit and confirming that this was in fact the work of a past highly advanced yet now lost civilization is the polygonal stonework which can be found within the walls of the structure, a type of blockwork construction found all over the world yet denied as being connected, just like that of the Neolithic ruins we often share here on the channel, that regardless of the similarities in ruins throughout nearly every continent are actively denied as having once been the work of the same group. Kate Clough, an explorer behind popularization of Turkey's Lycian Way hiking trail, described the blocks in a Turkish newspaper title, Hurriyet Daily News, quote, The system was designed for easy maintenance. If you examine the fallen blocks, you will find occasional ones with top holes bored into them. These were for cleaning out deposits and must have been sealed with a plug when the pipe was filled with water. There were also occasional stones where the socket cutout was extended so that a stone could be slipped out of the pipeline. Without this provision, replacing a faulty stone would have been impossible, as the blocks interlock completely. The pipe joints have traces of a lime cement used initially to seal them. However, the whole pipe is now thickly lined with a deposit of pink lime from the water inside it, and this must have quickly sealed any remaining leaks between the stones." End quote. Who built the reverse siphon, and the entire aqueduct as a whole? It is a place which we find highly compelling. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.